Let me share with you three of my best all-time driver videos. You know, driving doesn't have to be that complicated, especially when you get some of the secrets that I'm gonna share with you here. Let's go and get started. All right, hammered that one. Now, everybody wants it to drive her far, let's be honest. It's one of the most important things in golf. But it can be difficult sometimes, especially when the instruction you're getting is actually killing your swing speed and your distance rather than building your swing speed and your distance. Let me give you some of my best secrets to crank up the speed, crank up the distance, and make it even easier on your body. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so piece number one is making sure that we get a little bit more of a weight shift to the right. Every athletic motion that you have, you're gonna have a weight shift. Same in golf. I wanna get an early weight shift to the right so I really load up on my right side and then I can shift all that energy through the ball. It's gonna help me to complete the swing. It's gonna help me to accelerate through the ball into the finish and just make it a lot easier in general. Let me try to go ahead and hit one here where I don't get much of a weight shift. Not only am I gonna decrease power, I'm also gonna feel like my swing is all out of coordination. So here, I'm gonna feel like my weight kind of stays to the left and falls back to the right. And I'm really gonna to have to feel like my arms and hands take over to try to save the shot. So instead of going right and then shifting through the ball, I'm gonna stay left and then fall back away from the shot. So I'm left, falling back. And again, the, the shot went off the hosel, lost a ton of distance just because I felt like I couldn't really get all my energy into it. And then also, I lost awareness of the club face. So I'm gonna to start to hit not only slices like I did there, or hooks also, but I could just hit it all over the place. Now here's the solution for that. Very early in your backswing, I want you to feel like you load your right quad. So this muscle on top of your right leg, I want you to feel like you can feel some pressure into that muscle very early in the backswing. So when you wanna feel that is right as soon as you're taking the club away. So here, even if my club's only moved a foot, I wanna feel like I'm loaded into my right leg and I'm getting a little bit of a pressure shift that direction. Then as I complete my backswing, I'm gonna actually shift back to the left and swing through the ball. Again, so it's an early shift to the right. And then once I get to the right, I'm gonna shift left and swing down. That's the same thing as if you're gonna throw a baseball, I'm shifting right and then I'm shifting left through the ball. If I'm throwing a football, if I'm swinging a baseball bat, everything is right side early, shift left, and then swing through this golf ball. Make a couple practice swings doing that. Feel that right quad engage very early, and you're gonna make a better golf swing. Let's go ahead and give it a try here, where now I feel like almost before I even start my swing, I'm getting a little pressure into my right leg there. Let's give that a whirl. There we go, hit that one awesome. Couldn't do much better than that. We saw the first drive went 313, I believe is what it was. The second one was down at three, uh, 260, so I lost 50 yards or so. This third one was 324. So definitely much more powerful when I can get right early and then I can get everything to shift through the ball, accelerate through the ball. It just makes it a lot easier. Now with that is also your hip turn. You really don't wanna turn those hips off to where you feel like they're locked up. So very common thing that I see is for people to try to get the feeling of a big stretch in their body. And some instruction is gonna tell you that you should restrict the amount that your hips turn in the golf swing. So in my back swing, I'm gonna feel like I keep this right leg really flexed. And even if I shift to the right, I'm not gonna rotate my hips very much and I'm gonna get a big stretch between my hips and my shoulders. I feel really locked up here, even though I've only made half a back swing. Well, when you do that, again, the distance plummets. So if I feel like I restrict my hips here, I'm not gonna get nearly the distance that I wanna have. So that one I hit as perfect as I can hit a golf ball with a restricted hip turn. I mean, it is dead straight on arrow right down the middle of the fairway. Couldn't be any better, but it's still not gonna be as good as the ones that I just made decent swings on when I made my full turn. So that one was 244, 100 miles an hour swing speed. So even though it was dead flush, I just can't generate the speed and the power I can when I really rotate those hips. So I want you to focus in again on that right leg. Add this to what we talked about before. I wanna feel a little pressure in my right quad early in the swing. And I also wanna feel like I go ahead and push it in the ground, my right leg straightens up a bit. Now I don't wanna do this and sway to the right. I wanna feel like I'm staying here, I'm keeping this angle in my leg, but I'm loading the right leg and I'm straightening my right knee at the same time. 
So I feel a little pressure in my right quad and I also feel my legs straightening at the same time. That's what allows you to get the hips to turn in the backswing. So watch my hips this time. You'll see how it's a much bigger turn in the backswing and I really get much more loaded up. There we go, and another good one. All right, so now let's talk about the third piece, which is making a short, compact swing and having our arms kind of be on, on plane, as a lot of people call this. So I'm making a shorter swing. My hands aren't going as far back. And while I'm doing that, I'm keeping my arms, the angle of my left arm is kind of matching the angle that my shoulders are on. So this is kind of on plane here. Now that's gonna look good on camera. It's gonna look like a very nice looking swing. It's also, I can hit some solid shots from there. I can really play some pretty good golf doing that. But the problem is I have to work hard to be able to get the, the kind of distance I need. I have to have a great round to shoot a good score because I have to maximize hitting every shot solid to make up for the distance. If I can get a little farther, I don't have to play as well and I can still shoot the same score. So here, more compact, left arm matching the shoulders. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so that one hit nice and straight, really hit a good shot there. That's what I was saying, you can hit some good shots doing that, but with that shorter, more flatter swing, not gonna get the swing speed that I wanted. 105 miles an hour on the swing speed and 287, because that was a great flight. It had a lot of good roll. It carried 255, but that was basically a perfect shot with that type of swing. But you have more in your body. You can actually do more than that. So for you, that may be, if you're swinging 90 miles an hour or 100 miles an hour, that may be the shot that goes, you know, 200 yards or 220 yards, when really your body has potential to swing a lot faster than that. So let me go ahead and get one now where I feel like my arms elevate and my left arm specifically is higher than the angle of my shoulders. What that allows me to do is to add to that big body turn that I talked about and get my hands higher up here. It's actually easier to do to create distance that way. If you feel like you're more around your body, you're gonna feel tight, restricted, and you're not gonna feel like you have as much power. If you let your hands elevate, now you feel like you're freer you create easier swing speed. So you don't really have to swing very hard and you can still get a lot of pop on it. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and swing easy, but I'm gonna let my arms go a little higher and let's see what it changes in my swing speed and my carry distance. There we go. So I felt like for me, I didn't swing that hard. I hit a really nice shot right down the middle of the fairway. My swing speed on the last one was, and I can see the ball carry way farther. My swing speed on the last one was 105. That one was 120. The last one carried 255. That one carried 292. The last one was around 287. That was 319. So again, it doesn't matter if you're hitting it 200, 250, or 300. The same general principle on how your body works is gonna help you to get more effortless distance. So if I can get my left arm more up versus around, that not only makes me have a longer swing, but also helps me just to be freer and make a more relaxed swing kind of like a Fred Couples would do and create a lot of power that way. So let's recap these three pieces. Number one, weight shift has to be early. I wanna feel like I load my right quad. Number two, I have to rotate my hips. That's me feeling like I push into the ground, this right leg straightens and I get my hips to rotate as I'm doing that. So early weight shift and I'm letting my hips rotate. Number three, really give yourself that effortless power by letting your arms go up instead of letting your, making your arms go short and around your body. You do those three things, you free up your swing and you just hit it a whole heck of a lot farther. Golf is a whole heck of a lot more fun. Now we all wanna crush those drives dead straight, long down the middle of the fairway. But there's a couple things that make that nearly impossible. If I'm teeing the ball up, where about half the ball is above my crown, just like you see here, it may make it nearly impossible if I swing correctly to not hit thin on the bottom of the club face. You're gonna lose a lot of distance when you do that. Same thing with my shoulder position. If I get it too far forward, now I'm gonna to have to lose lag, I'm gonna cast, I'm gonna flip, and worst of all, your, fair, your drives are gonna be inconsistent and they're not gonna be very far down the fairway. I'm gonna talk about the solutions to those and a couple other key tricks in this video. Let's go and get started. All right, so let's jump right in. I'm gonna hit a couple shots and talk about some of these key mistakes that we all can make. And uh, Q's gonna read some of our flight scope numbers here on, on the radar, so it's gonna be tracking these shots. Number one is gonna be the T height. 
Time and time again, I see players that are setting up the ball with about half the ball above the crown of the club. So meaning that half the ball is sticking up above this top edge of the driver. Now when that's happening, that's okay if I'm swinging level or down into the golf ball. So if I'm kind of hitting down into my drives, I'm gonna lose some distance, I'm gonna hit it inconsistent, but that tee height is about okay if I'm hitting down into it. So if I hit a drive, you know, you know I'm hitting down, a uh, big slice into the trees, lost tons of speed and tons of distance. I was actually able to hit on the top of the club face where I want to, but we're gonna talk about why this is all just a giant mess and go through that here in a second. So first let's look at that first swing, doing it incorrectly. What was my club head speed? What was my distance? You know, what happened on that shot? Club head speed was about 100, uh, distance was 227. You hit down on it 5.9 degrees. Okay, so there, driving it incorrectly, a couple things are going on. Number one, I had that ball T height too low. So only about half the ball was sticking up over my driver head. Now, if you wanna hit it far, if you wanna really get that high launch, you wanna be swinging up into the ball. So there, I was kind of chopping down into the ball. That's one of the most common things I see. I'd say probably 80 or more percent of players that I see are hitting down into their drives, which is not a good thing. I wanna be hitting up into the drives. Problem lies in this ball, this, this tee height. If I tee it up where just half the ball is over the crown, if my club reaches its low point behind the golf ball and starts moving up into the golf ball, which is exactly what we wanna be doing, look how now I'd be hitting off the bottom of the driver. When I hit thin off the bottom of the driver, I lose all kinds of distance, just like we saw there. I have to make contact on the top half of the club face. That's what's gonna make it launch higher, spin less, and carry a mile. So instead of teeing that ball half a ball above my driver face, I wanna get a good three quarters of the ball above the driver face. So now we can see if I make the right kind of swing, how I can hit up into this golf ball and I still have room to hit it on the top half of the club face. That makes things a lot easier. Let's go ahead and try one there. And we're gonna see that I pick up a whole lot more distance when I also stay behind it and tee it up a little bit higher. We're gonna to get to the second part here in just one second. All right, so much better on that one, much longer right down the middle of the fairway. Not quite perfect yet. Hit that one a little bit off the heel, but let's go ahead and go to the second key here after we talk about the numbers on that one. So what was the, the stats on that one, Q? So club head speed was 118, total distance 308, and uh, angle of attack, you were hitting up on it about 1.3. So hit a little bit up on that one. Another big key there, I mentioned the second thing is I don't wanna be sliding in front of this. That first shot where I just kinda sliced it off in the woods, it wasn't any good. I was letting my shoulder get up in front of my ankle. Now, if you wanna hit your drives far, what you wanna do is something called the compression line. And what I mean by this, that's a, that's a term we use in the top speed golf system. What I mean by this is at impact, if I was to draw a line from my left ankle, the center of my left ankle, to the center of my left shoulder socket, that would be tilted away from the target. This would be toward the target. I'd be chopping down in the ball, weak, short drives. This would be away from the target, hitting up into the ball, long, powerful drives. Now, it's not just that I'm away that's helping me hit, it up, hit up on it that's good. It's also the powerful position I'm in with my body. When I get tilted away from the target, now look how it makes a lot of sense where I can have this lag and then release that out in front of the golf ball. If I was up here and I had a lot of lag, I would swing right over top of the golf ball. Wouldn't make sense. So from here, I can get lag, release that in the golf ball. I'm gonna hit it a lot farther. So here, notice on this swing, my compression line. I'm gonna feel like as I tee up to, or as I set up to this golf ball, my head is behind the golf ball, my shoulder is behind my lead ankle, and I feel like I'm really gonna get behind it and let everything release out through the golf ball. So I'm getting my speed in front of the golf ball rather than chopping down into the golf ball. Let's go ahead and try that out. There we go, that one was perfect there. Couldn't have hit that one much better. Gonna have a positive angle attack, I bet. And I stayed behind that one really nicely. What were the numbers on that cue? So 118 club head speed, total distance was 323, and your angle of attack was up three degrees. So up three degrees, that's about perfect there. So. One other last thing here, me and Q were talking a minute ago and he was mentioning something that I thought was really interesting to me. Why don't you walk him through what you believe makes the most sense to get the third piece here, which would be ball position. 
So where could I go wrong? Again, we're, we don't want to hit down into this. We saw right. how bad that can be. What do I need to do with my ball position to get it, get it right? Right, so we've often heard that we want to play the ball off the inside of our lead foot. And that can be a fine position for a lot of people, but what happens is we all have different stance widths. So if you play that ball off the inside of your lead foot, do a narrow stance for okay. me. And basically what we, we want to happen is we want this club to bottom out and then work up into the golf ball. And typically where that club is bottoming out is about right in your armpit there. So if you look here, if he has a narrow stance and he plays that ball off the inside of his lead foot, on that armpit, that's basically gonna be, it might even be a little bit ahead of the golf ball, depending so on the might camera angle. I'm gonna be tufted up on that from, from this narrow stance here. Right. I'd be so, kind of falling off. Right, so we definitely don't want to be doing that. And if you had a very wide stance, now if you step that back foot back, there you go, you play off the inside of your foot. Now that armpit might be too far behind the ball and the club might be coming in, bottoming out and then working up into the ball and hitting nice or bad thin shots that you don't want to be hitting. Those are gonna be the really thin ones that really balloon up into the air. It's kind of the other stream. I get way back here and now right. I'm gonna almost hit the ground or thin it, you know? Right. So what we really want to do is play that ball in relationship to our upper body. And I found that off the outside of your lead shoulder is actually a great way, a great place to play the ball because that allows the club to bottom out about where the armpit is and then work up a few inches into the golf ball so you can get that nice upward angle of attack. So you get that high launch, low spin. Those are the drives that we all want. So Clay, how about you hit one here where you okay. display that really good ball position and see what kind of numbers Yeah, that get. makes a ton of sense to me too because I could, as long as I keep this in relationship to my shoulder, I could have my feet narrow and I'd still be in a good spot to where I could hit up on it. I could have my feet really wide and maybe the ball would look like it's a little farther back in my stance, but it's still in that good position. So I like that a lot. So I'm gonna play it off the outside of my shoulder. I've got the correct tee height and I have what's called the compression line. I'm staying behind the golf ball. When I put all three of those together, I'm in a, just in a position here to where I can really get a lot of lag. I can swing through this golf ball and get tons of speed and I'm gonna be pretty consistent while I'm doing that. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. There we go, that might have been the best one of the several that I've hit. What were the stats on that one there, Q? Still, still in the air. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so it just came down, 117 club head speed, total distance 331, you're hitting up on it almost six degrees. Yeah, so you can see there, as I started to go up and up more, the ball flew higher, got lower spin, and it went a heck of a lot longer. So follow those three keys, you're gonna hit the best drives of your life. All right, guys, awesome to have you here today. I can't well wait to help you improve your distance and ramp up that club head speed. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but, but growing up, I always heard over and over again, we want to keep it sh short and straight. We want to hit it in the fairway. Hitting fairways is absolutely the best thing to do. Hitting greens is the best thing to do. And I agree with that. It is nice to hit fairways and greens. It makes your round a little bit easier. But commonly, we're told to slow down, cut down our swing, make the angles really good, make it short and tight and then get it in the fairway. Don't try to go after it, don't try to swing hard. Well, in reality, that's not what the top pros are doing. If you look at the top 10 players in the money list on the PGA Tour, that's guys like Dustin Johnson, Rory McIlroy, Adam Scott, Justin Thomas. Those are big hitters, those are really good players. You don't see a lot of guys out there that are short, consistent, and straight in the top of the money list. Even at your local club, the longest hitters, I bet they're some of the best players at your club too. So I want that to be you guys. I want you guys to pick up some great speed and have a lot more fun out there. Go ahead and let it rip, chase it down, and make a lot more birdies. Golf's a lot more fun when we can hit it far. So if I take my short, consistent swing, usually what I see when players do this, if I'm just trying to get it in the fairway, a lot of times I'll kind of cut out what I'm doing with my legs. So you might oftentimes, if we're looking from the down the line view here, oftentimes you'll see the hips aren't really opening up very much. That right heel kind of stays on the ground as you're coming through contact. And what that does is it makes it more into an arm swing. So if my lower body kind of cuts off and doesn't really get a lot of power from my lower body, I end up using all upper body and I'm kind of trying to guide it down the fairway. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what one looks like when I'm doing this kind of guide mode. I'm kind of calming everything down. I'm not getting very aggressive with my body motion. I'm just gonna to try to hit one short and sweet right down the middle. I still felt like I put out a decent amount of effort on that. That ball didn't have a lot of pop on it, even though I hit it pretty daggone solid. Got some nice run on it, so not a bad shot. You're playing around, you think, okay, that's, that's pretty good. I got it short and straight. My club head speed was 110. 
My carry distance was 254. Like I said, that thing took off running pretty firm fairways, almost ran out to 294. So I get up there and I'm thinking, hey, that's pretty good. Then I get in a little bit of trouble and I get even shorter and tighter. And I multiply that two, three, 10 weeks, a year, two years. And before I know it, I've lost 15 or 20 miles an hour club head speed. And I'm really not even that much straighter because of whatever speed I gave up was from my body not working as aggressively. And I had to get more hands and arms into it to try to keep it straight. So it's, it's kind of an endless cycle there where the, as soon as we hit one off track, we slow it down more and more. If we could just ramp up that speed, get going a little bit faster, you'll actually find your consistency doesn't really suffer that much and you're gonna hit it another 20, 30 yards. So let's go ahead and know exactly how that's gonna happen. Well, I talked about on the short straight swing, usually the body kind of slows down, the hips slow down, we don't use our legs, we don't really whip this club through there and we lose some power. Let's get out of that habit. Let's break that right now and get that speed ramped up. So I want you to go ahead and set up with your normal stance. We're gonna just do some practice swings here first, but you can see if I'm lining up for that ball, I'm basically taking my normal stance and then I'm gonna bring my left foot back to my right foot. This is the baseball step drill. And what this does for you, as you step forward, I'm gonna have some flex in my legs. Now I'm starting to engage the lower body like those big hitters on tour are doing. From there, I'm gonna push down and out into the ground and I'm gonna let this club whip back up as I'm coming on through. Now this is pretty counterintuitive. I think this is pretty cool. I never used to think about it this way, but if I'm telling you to swing as hard as you can, most people think I'm gonna take the grip of this club and I'm gonna pull it toward the target as hard as I can. That's gonna get me my speed. Watch what happens when I pull this club. If I pull this straight toward the target, watch what happens with the club head. It actually tries to kick this way a little bit, which will be away from the target, away the direction I'm trying to go, and it could be slowing it down. So the harder we pull, that club doesn't really accelerate that fast. Look at the club head itself. I'm just grabbing this with two fingers. I pull hard, the club really isn't going anywhere. Now what the best players on tour are doing, and what science has been showing us through a lot of research over the past few years, best players are getting some lag, and as that club swings down, they're pulling up hard. Watch what happens when I do that. If I take my two fingers and pull this club straight up toward the sky, now all of a sudden you see that club really start to accelerate toward the target. That's exactly what we wanna do in our swing. If we're looking at it from this way, when I pull up and over my shoulder, the club's kinda of going that direction. If I'm looking at it from face on, what the best players are doing, they're swinging really hard at the ball, they're taking this grip and at impact, they're pulling up and over their left shoulder. That's getting that whipping action of the club coming through there. That's where you're gonna get a lot of your speed without having to be this big, huge, strong guy. You can just be a regular everyday person and get that club to really accelerate through impact. When I'm doing my step drill, that's the sensation that I wanna have. I'm putting my feet together, I'm loading into the ground, I'm pushing up with my body, and I'm think, feeling this grip turn up kind of over my shoulder this direction. The more I can get that club to whip up that direction, the more speed I can get. Let's go ahead and do this three times in a row. We're gonna put, the right foot stays the same, my left foot comes in. As soon as I start my backswing, I'm gonna take that step forward and now as I get here, now I'm feeling like I'm gonna turn that club up and let it whip on through contact. Let's do three swings maximum speed, as hard as you can go on these. If you're in your living room right now, grab a club, let's go ahead and get started. So here, oh yeah, I could definitely tell, swung a lot harder on that one. Do that, like I said, three or four in your living room until you get comfortable with that. Then let's go out to the course and do the same thing. Three or four practice swings. Now, I'm gonna get a little crazy here. I'm actually gonna take that step with a golf ball and let her rip. I'm just gonna ha absolutely hammer on it. Let's see what it does to my club head speed here. So baseball swing again, take my feet together, take that step. There we go, right down the pipe on that one. Just kind of cutting barely into the right center of the fairway. I'm betting my club head speed was pretty high on that shot. Club speed was 118.7. My carry distance went up to 292 and it rolled out to 323. So noticeable difference between my first swing and my second swing. Now what you're probably asking here is like, okay, Clay, I see that my swing speed can get higher and higher if I'm doing this baseball step, but I don't see guys on the PGA Tour doing a big baseball step and swinging. And that's true. We're gonna tone this down now to where we get the same sensation in our normal swing, but we're gonna take out the step. So let's go really in depth here and let's actually show exactly what's going on from the ground up 
when we're doing this step drill and why it's getting you some more speed. Let's start with the foot. If I do this, that, that foot is flexing up. That's my calf muscles firing and extending my foot up. Well, the more that motion I get, the more upward force I can get. That's why you're seeing guys like Justin Thomas actually come up off their feet because they're trying to get as much of that upward motion as they can. So if I'm looking at it this way, that's my foot doing this. Well, if I'm looking at a good golf swing, as they start the downswing, as a player starts the downswing, they have a little flex in their legs. So there's an angle between my, low, my foot, my foot and my calf. Now, as I start to extend up in the swing and go into the straight line release, like we call it on the top speed golf system, I've gotten rid of a lot of that angle. So my toe is actually pushing down into the ground. So they call ground force reaction. And basically to simplify things, we don't have to get that complicated with it. Just know if I push into the ground with my foot down and out that direction, that's good for swing speed. The more I do that, the more speed I'm gonna get. Now let's move up to the knee. As I start to come on through that shot, again, if I let that leg flex, I wanna go ahead and push that knee up and to get that, that club to start to whip up. The more my knee extends, the more my body moves up and clears out of the way, and the more I can get that, that grip to whip on through there. So in the top speed golf system, like I mentioned, the straight line release is when all this energy has released out here in front, about 45 degrees in front of where your ball is. So if I'm making this swing, my leg's gonna be straight now when I'm, about, when I'm fully released the club. That's really helping with that whipping action. Let's go one more up to the hip. If I'm looking at my hip socket, if I'm going toward the camera, as I start down, I have a little squat and I feel like in my, my left rear end, my butt cheek here, as I stand through, that's gonna turn up and out of the way. If I'm looking at it from face on, that, that hip is moving this direction up and out of the way. Again, that helps me to rip that grip vertical like this. As I go up to my shoulder, my downswing, my left shoulder is getting lower. My shoulders are down. The shoulder gets low here. I'm exaggerating here a little bit just so you can see that. This gets lower and as I come through, look how that shoulder goes up and clears out of the way. That's gonna transfer that chain. That's that connect chain. It goes from the foot, knee, hip, shoulder. And then finally, we're going into our hands. Our, last, our only connection point to the club and our last link in the chain. As I start that downswing, my hands are getting low here. And then as I let everything lift up, now I'm getting that club to whip up through contact. That gets that kind of catapult effect on the club head and it really takes off for some speed. So let's take the step out of this and I want you to feel that left side extending up toward the sky as much as you can. So I'm gonna do some practice swings here. Halfway into my downswing, I'm kind of letting my legs flex. My club head is low, my hands are low. And then from there, I wanna feel everything just extend up and whip on through to get that great speed there. That's gonna slingshot that club through contact. I want you to go ahead and do three swings like that. Kind of pausing here low, and now I'm really feeling like I'm really gonna whip that, let that club whip up. Three more practice swings, nice and easy. Half back swing, then really turn on the power down here through contact. There we go, now we're seeing that happen. Once you get comfortable with that, whether it's three swings or 30 swings, once you get a good feel for that, now we're gonna go ahead and try to hit this golf ball. It's the same sensation with that step drill and that left side extension, or that left side lift that I just went over in that last piece of the drill. Now let's go ahead and hammer one. Let's see if I can stay around that 118 miles per hour without taking the baseball step. All right, guys, hammered that one. Just barely down the right center of the fairway. This is a par five. I'm gonna have a nice short shot into this one. Let's see what that club head speed was. So my first one was 110, 118.9 when I did the baseball step. And that one was 118, total distance of 324. So I got the same effect of that baseball swing. The only point of that baseball swing was just to get the feeling of using my body correctly, getting the feeling of this left side coming up, getting that nice and aggressive lift and getting that club to whip on through contact. That's great to know I can get a little bit extra club head speed, but how can I make that more consistent? One of the fundamentals in the top speed golf system is what we call the straight line release. I mentioned that a little bit in this video. And that concept says, as we start to let this club whip through contact, I'm only releasing at 45 degrees here in front. The ball 
is just getting in the way. So if you feel like you have that hit impulse, like you're trying to hit at the golf ball, your consistency is struggling, the straight line release is gonna be the perfect pair to what we just talked about in this video. I'm gonna play one of my straight line release videos, one of the best ones out there, as a preview here in a second. Just click the link that pops up on your screen or click the link down in, below in the description. So the card on the screen or the link in the description, you'll get instant access to that video. And man, you guys will really be able to pair those things together, have some great fun on the golf course. Let's go and get started with that straight line release. A common misconception I see is that we wanna create lag and we just wanna hold that lag all the way on through contact and get as much lag as we can coming through contact. And that's simply not true. In the release section, we're gonna talk about how to turn that lag into energy, how to turn that into speed so that you can hit it very far and do it, like we mentioned, without hardly any effort at all. And as we're coming through contact, we're gonna fully release this angle as we're about 45 past contact. So if I draw you know, a 45 degree angle, I should be looking at both arms, nice and straight, the club splitting those arms, so that by releasing the club, by getting this angle to release as we're coming through contact, that's what's gonna create the speed. Our hands are moving a very short distance, our club is moving a very long distance through contact, and it creates that whip-like effect. Very different swings hitting the exact same position. So first, let's take a look at Dustin Johnson releasing the club 45 past. And the reason we're gonna see such similar or such different swings producing similar positions is that this is the real physics of how this has to happen. Here we're looking at Sergio Garcia. Again, we're gonna to see tons of